guys, welcome to the channel Rock on the Country. I'm Don. I've got a gift request. Jason Halverson made a gift to the channel for me to do two reactions, actually. I made two gifts. The equivalent thereof. One today and another one will be up tomorrow. And it's both, they're both of Gene Watson. And if you're new to traditional country or new to the channel and haven't heard Gene Watson, he's the real deal. And he's got just this this voice, this delivery, this personality. He just is the real deal when it comes to country music. The Old Man and His Horn. Now, I don't know this song, so it's a reaction. And I can't even imagine. I've done a number of Gene's rea reactions to Gene's songs, but I can't even imagine what this would be about. What horn? I, I don't know. Also, I'm wearing a hat that Jason sent me. Uh, I opened it up yesterday, actually. The unboxing was yesterday or the day before, but Minnesota, that's where Jason's from. So thank you again for this. The land of 10,000 lakes. Actually, I think I saw somewhere, there's more than 10,000 lakes up there. I th but it, I think there are like 15, but maybe it, or like some weird number, like 13,000, 14, 18 or something. But it just sounded better just to make it 10,000 lakes. Anyway, that's a lot of lakes, actually. They got to be a lot of is that mountain runoff up there. Is that what you know populates the lakes with water? All right, here we go. Oh, the old man and his horn. Well, that's a nice beginning. The old man told his stories about the years gone by. How he played his horn down in New Orleans in some old dingy dial. I knew him all back then, he said, as he reached out for his horn. He closed his eyes and wet his lips, and then the blues were born. Uh, that dude. Played so much feeling, tears came from his eyes. He stopped and reminisced a bit, and then he gave a sigh. Hear the packing? Said, you know, I almost made it, but that's before your time. Dixieland, poor folks blue. Get man Jackson's wine. Slapped his knee and gave a grin. It sure was good back then. Reaching for his horn on the floor. Placed it in an old tow sack that hung across his back. He said goodbye, then shuffled out the door. This has shades of um, Leonard Skinner's the, the Ballad of Curtis Lowe, just the theme of the song of a musician. An older musician didn't make it, but kept playing until the day he died. Enthused by what he told me, I never got his name. So I called the waitress over and started to explain. A tired old man, his tarnished horn, and memories of years gone by. How he played his horn and reminisced and smiled with tear dim eyes. Yeah. She said, You are mistaken. There's been no one but you But I know who you're talking about I used to know him too You'll find him down on Basin Street And back of an old churchyard A stone that reads Rest in peace I tried but it sure was hard Yeah Slapped his knee and gave a grin It sure was good back then Reaching 
far his home on the floor Wasted in an old tow sack That hung across his back He said goodbye and yeah. then shuffled out the door He said goodbye and then shuffled out the door That, I mean, I don't know if that was about somebody in particular because it didn't mention a name in there. But if was there a particular person that inspired this song? Because usually songwriters will be asked that question and it'll come out and ultimately make its way to people uh, who are uh, paying attention in the music industry in some way or just fans. But that's one of those songs where you could kind of feel it. You know, I mean, you could like feel the scenery. You could see it in your mind's eye in some way, in some way, but you could kind of like you feel it. But the horn, when somebody refers to a horn, is that a specific type? I mean, because you, there are different types of horns, you know, the wind instruments and such. But, you know, a, a horn, you've got a French horn, you've got other types of horns there's i guess a bugle i you might refer to that as a bugle i don't know that element i wasn't a musician i played sax for like three weeks i took lessons when i was in like sixth grade and then i just didn't want to practice i mean the, <laughs> the age old story and uh i didn't like the smell of the reed i didn't like any of it and um so even though, like the rental was for like three months and so my father was pissed but whatever, that's the nature of parenthood and childhood. You try things out, and I didn't like it. I didn't want to practice, so I never learned. But this was a really, this was an interesting song, too, because I was picturing myself being in a concert where Gene was performing this, and it's one of those songs that doesn't, isn't made to get the crowd up. It's not made to get them down, either. It's just made to tell a story of a person that maybe you, I don't know, maybe you knew about, maybe you didn't. But it, it, but then the drum beat here was repetitive, and it worked in this song. There was, it, it just worked. The storyline carried it, the, 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 the song. But the, you know, Nashville, I just the repeat drum loop that they've got just doesn't work. But they may. They they take it from this because it actually does contribute to the energy in a song, and so rather have this be a totally sad song, they wanted this a bit more up tempo, and the drum is one way of keeping that going. The bass, of course, is necessary to keep it going too, but Nashville just overdoes it with the uh, the reproduced repeat metronomic drum you know drum loop basically or whatever you call it. But in this song, it it, it worked. It just moved the song along. But how interesting a song was this? There are a lot of components in the way in which it was structured. I've never experienced that before. And that doesn't make it great. It doesn't make it bad. It makes it different. And certainly when you feature a horn in a country song, it's different in any song, actually, other than jazz itself or, or yeah, even, yeah, jazz would be the only one, really, right? Possibly the blues, but not really. That's more harmonica-y. All right, Jason, good call on this one. It This really just showed a, sort of showcased Gene's ability to sing multiple types of songs just and pull them off really beautifully. So the number that popped into my head immediately was a 9.2 on the rating scale here, on the Richter scale. It It just moved along. It was captivating. I was trying to figure out who specifically was it about, but I think it was, you know, the person wasn't named. It could have just been about any jazz player in New Orleans that uh, played play the horn. 
So there you go. All right, folks, you can thank Jason Halverson up in the land of 10,000 lakes for this one. Have a great day. I'll see you on another video and keep rocking the country.